So I've been using MATLAB uh, professionally every day for the last 10 years and on and off for like a total of 20 years and I'm still finding new features or features that I had, uh, didn't know about or had forgotten about. And NumPy is kind of based off of uh, MATLAB, at least the format is. So a lot of those features are duplicated in, in NumPy. And I just came across something yesterday that um, I didn't either know or I had forgotten about. Um, I have problems like this a lot, where I have an array that is 1, 2, 3, 3, 4, 5, 6. And there's that duplicate 3 that um, I don't need in my, my data set. Now, I know that uh, MATLAB and Python has a unique command, which will give back a, the, all the unique values in this array. So if I come down here and I go print np.unique a, you see it gets rid of the 3. And that's, that's fine. And here's the same thing in MATLAB. We have our array A, and we can just do a unique, I could spell it right, A. Same, same, same thing as in um, NumPy. But the issue I was having in my actual code is I don't have just a single vector as part of a matrix. So here is my duplicate entry here. It's in this top row. And I just want to get rid of a row that has a three in it. And I, I don't care particularly which one it was. So what I would do in this case is I would just take the uh, diff of A. I'd subtract off uh, one element from the next. And you can see that I get a zero here where, it's, where it doubles up on the three. And then what I could do here is get my indexes from that. I can do IND is equal to find um, where that diff statement gives back zero. So you see it's three. And remember MATLAB indexes from one as opposed to NumPy being zero. So it's one, two, it's a third element, um, which corresponds to here. And I could just take my B matrix. And what I could do is just say B is equal to uh, B, let's just get rid of that, uh, that that third column. So all rows and the third column, which will be our IND, is just equal to an empty vector. What did I do wrong? Uh, you know, um, usually I mix in MATLAB with my Python, and now I'm mixing in Python with my MATLAB. In MATLAB, these are parentheses and not square brackets. There we go. We got rid of that annoying element. And here's the same idea in NumPy. So here is our B array. I use the diff command here. And instead of find, it's mp.where in, in um, NumPy. It gives me my index. And it comes back as an array. So I, an array um, of vectors. So I just pull out that, that index. And then I use the delete command and say axis equals 1, saying we're deleting a column. And we get back the, the same thing. And that's all well and good. It's a little bit clunky, but it does work. And this all uh, worked well enough for me in practice um, when it did crop up. However, recently I've been getting uh, cases where these numbers, duplicate numbers, were not sequential and they were kind of scattered throughout the array. So our recent data sets have been taken over a long period of time with a comparatively high frequency of, of data acquisition. So we're taking months of data at like one second time intervals. So there are some uh, duplicate entries and they're not necessarily back to back. So here's an actual data set, um, truncated data set. And this is what it looks like if you plot the, uh, the first column here on the x-axis, second column on the y-axis. It's basically voltage as a function of what's known as depth of discharge. And if we look at the size of this, this array here, and then the size of the number of unique elements, um, we have over 6,400, almost 6,500 uh, entries in that array, and only 4,500 of them are unique. And I did this trick here by looking at the differences. Um, so I found all the points where, like, the sequential points were, were equal, and I counted those, and you get this number, and, you, and then you notice that this plus this does not quite equal this. So... There are duplicate entries um, kind of spread out throughout uh, this file. And I thought this was going to be a big pain in the butt to actually fix. But uh, just kind of reading up on the documentation, I real realized that the unique command can give you back the indices of those unique values as well. So let's just quickly uh, do that. So this function can return both all both the unique values and the indices at which those values occur. So I passed in my data, the first column of that, the second column of that data set into the unique function. And in NumPy, you need to provide this flag return index equals true. So I could run this and get my indices. And then I could just prune down my data set. 
So I should be able to go data is equal to data. I want, um, which rows do I want? I want IND rows and those corresponding columns. There we go. And let's just print data.size. Or actually data.shape. I've been mixing up NumPy and MATLAB today. Data.shape. So 4557, is that the number of unique elements uh, in the array? Where is it? 4557. We are good to go here. And for the sake of completeness, here's the uh, same thing in MATLAB. I load in the data. I print out the size of the original data set. Let's actually run this. So the original data set is up here. It's you know almost 6,500 by two. Uh, the number of unique elements is 4557. And in MATLAB, you don't need to provide that additional flag. You just pass in the, um, you just give it the fact that it, it, it wants two outputs and it puts the uh, unique values in here and the indices in here. And then it's the same thing. You just truncate your data down and we get the exact same thing as before. So I don't know if this will be of use to any of you, uh, but these types of problems where you have to process data just come up all the time when dealing with re real world applications. And I thought this was going to be a pain in the butt to, to deal with. And it turned out that uh, the programming languages I use have uh, already built in features to take care of it. So I had either forgotten about it or didn't know about that. And so occasionally just going back and looking through the documentation again is a, a good, uh, good thing to do. So real video coming soon on something more, uh, more interesting. And until then, see ya.